It's June 3rd, my 40th birthday, and let's do a tour of my first ever garden. I'm gonna do the uh, kind of what we call the back porch garden, which is um, herbs and some vegetables and some dahlias and some flowers. And then uh, this right here on the side of the house is uh, kale and it's more like a greens and um, cut flowers including basil and then there's the salsa garden which is the tomatoes and the peppers which was really the only garden we had planned but all the rest kind of came up because I'm doing this before I lose the light I'm not doing any gardening maintenance so this is just this is just what it looks like after um, being out here actually showing my mom and my brother earlier today and the fireflies are out so hopefully you'll get to see them okay so we're gonna start at the um, kind of corner of my house. I have a, uh, so this is a Rose of Sharon. It's a double Rose of Sharon. It'll be pink. It bloomed last year, died back, grew back so beautifully. You can see there's a, a lot of new growth on it. So I'm super excited for that. Um, this is a hollyhock I got from Bluestone Perennials. It should be white. It is doing really good and actually quite a bit of new growth since it came. Um, I I seeded some teddy bear sunflower seeds in here, but nothing's happened. This bed is a bed built entirely by laying down cardboard on grass on lawn and then layering grass and leaves in the fall. That's it. We did nothing else to it. We haven't even composted on top of it. So I feel like you can see the dirt isn't very, it's not loamy yet. Um, we still have more work to do. This is the uh, the first dahlia I planted outside. Um, I had started this um, by, I started the tuber inside and you can see it has a little damage to the leaves, but it's, it's looking pretty good. We've got another dahlia here. I have no idea what these dahlias are. <laughs> and then we've got two milkweeds here and you can see some of the cardboard didn't break down yet. So we need to come and compost I'm going to mulch the whole thing with compost. Now this, this is my sweet broccoli that um, me and my five-year-old planted on March 1st. And um, I just added some extra, some seed starting mix I had, some potting soil I had um, from seeds that didn't start. I just laid down here. Um, this is carrots or dill that I planted months ago that is just now coming up. So this whole bed needs to be edged. You can see the grass is just coming right up on it. But look at this guy. So we planted six, and this is the only guy doing this good. He's doing really good. And this is his brethren, planted the same day. So, I mean, it's just, the difference is crazy. <laughs> Little guy, big guy. He comes up to my knee. Another Dahlia. Um, Oh, did I show you the milkweed? This milkweed was given to me by a member of the Wild Ones um, group, and she actually gave me several, and I just planted those out. Then we've got the, what I want to turn into the total herb garden. So we've got two lavender here. We've got a third different kind of lavender here, which is actually blooming. I need to come out here and um, get collect some. And in between, we've got some radishes planted. Now my daughter pulled up this radish and then decided it wasn't big enough, so. We'll see if it gets any bigger if we're just gonna feed it to the bunnies you see more radishes the problem is everybody in the family wants to grow radishes but nobody seems to want to eat them so we've got radishes um sage um what is this oh this is a giant radish i think okay so so we've got radishes two sage two thyme which are over here looking way better than they were um and what's that is that a rosemary is this my rosemary oh my gosh my rosemary got so much new growth on it this is unbelievable this guy was a stick he's got all this nice soft growth oh, i'm so excited my husband let my daughter taste the rosemary <laughs> she of course did not like it and then this is the only um sunflower that i've planted from seed that i've actually gotten to come up direct seeded in the garden. Everything else I started from seeds and I planted the little seedlets. Um, but this guy actually, I direct seeded him. There's another white hollyhock I got from Bluestone Perennials. I've got five broccoli here from um, Build It Up, which 
I'll talk about an upcoming video. They are a gardening group that is helping people grow more food locally. And they have been an amazing source of resources and plants and seeds. And then we've got my first parsley here. It's getting a little dark. And these are some seeds that I've started, some nasturtium, some zinnias, some celosia, and that's some milkweed seeds that are looking pretty good too. Now, we're gonna walk around. I told you I didn't pick up, there's some bubbles. My hammock I need to put out. And see on this side of the yard then, we have the salsa garden and we have, I'm really, at this, <laughs> we just call the side beds. So this right here is a walkway. We're gonna get some stones this weekend, I hope, to put in between it. And then there are flowers. This is a dahlia here. And let's walk, let's walk down. So the planting really doesn't start until here because this is all in shade and it's also kind of a hill. And I think many of my seedlings have actually brushed down that way. So here, we have zinnias. All of these were started by seed inside and then planted out. So zinnias, cosmos, um, more zinnias, some sunflowers, some single sim sunflowers. And on this side, across the way, given from Build It Up, they give us three plants of this kind of kale and two of that kind of kale. So those are the only things I haven't started from seed. I started the marigolds from seed many 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 basil i'm sure you've seen that in a recent video more marigolds doing good more basil we've got italian basil we've got cinnamon basil and across from the cinnamon basil we have the um the sunflowers and then in here we have some direct seeded zinnias which are doing doing a little better than i thought i just came in here and i um thinned them out a little bit they could probably be thinned out even more but I'll probably just replant them to thin them out, some more basil. You might see bits of my daughter's hair, and that is because that is supposed to keep the bunnies away. So since we have greens right here and we have this whole yard full of delicious clover, we get a lot of bunnies hanging out in our yard and I'm really happy for them to eat the clover. I'm not happy for them to eat my greens. So we have um, sprinkled some hair through here. So this is cinnamon basil. This one guy's looking really good. And, chunky and you can see several more basil all the way up to the end of the bed and then over here we have a pepper started from my dad's seeds and another one those are thai dragon chili peppers and we have some amaranth planted in here but so far not much is coming up and then here So this edge of the bed, we have some more marigolds and some direct seeded kale and Swiss chard. I actually just thinned this a little bit, but they just became kind of kale looking. And me and my daughters ate it as microgreens just fresh out of the garden. This is a volunteer something. Cucumber, zucchini, pumpkin, watermelon, we'll see. I'm just gonna let it go since it's on the edge here. I actually had several more. The compost came with uh, quite a few volunteer something, cucamelons. So we're gonna let them, um, I'm gonna plant them kind of on the edge and just see what happens to them. I'm losing light, so I'll come back tomorrow and do the salsa beds. Here's a sneak peek at the tomatoes and peppers. I was hoping to let you see the fireflies. So it's chill here for a minute. Welcome back. It's bright and sunny the following day, Saturday, and I thought we would finish up the garden tour. So we talked about this last night. We've got greens, marigolds, basil. Look at those sunflowers back there. More basil, more basil, more basil. <laughs> I'm going to interplant some stuff with the basil because um, they seem kind of far apart. Um, and then we've also got some greens here and we've got a, a mahogany hibiscus there, mahogany splendor. Um, some amaranth here, which you can actually see this morning. It wasn't showing up yesterday. I need to thin that out. 
And then, and then here on the other side of our air conditioner unit, um, this is just some hay hanging out. But um, I've got my my I've got a peony planted here and three peonies planted back there. Now this is their first year. I just planted them this spring, and so I'm not really expecting anything from them. So I'm just letting them chill. And in front of them, we've got a tilled bed that is covered with compost. I I don't know if you remember half of this is just um, cardboard with compost on top of it and half of it is just compost um, and then planted directly into it with no cardboard so I'm curious to see what the weeds do and how the plants grow. Um, this I planted watermelon. Um, how many days ago would that have been? Four to five days ago. So let's see. No. <gasps> ooh, ooh. Oh, look at that. That's a watermelon seedling. Now, what it, do we think this is a watermelon seedling or do we think that's a weed? We'll see. Um, doesn't look like there's anything else coming up for sure. So this is a cedar um, TP. I actually did a video of um, putting this up. It was, it was really easy to put up, but it was about $15. Whereas these, bamboo things for a pack of five were like three dollars so this is obviously much less much less strong so this should be able to hold this watermelon is a sugar baby watermelon i'll put a picture here so you can see it um and again that's a that's a peony inside there that's just chilling hopefully my watermelon doesn't choke it out but you know peonies you, you cut back at the end of spring so it should just be chilling underground while my watermelon grow up high. I'm also hoping that this covers the eyesore of the air conditioning unit. So then we've got three teepees with pickling cucumbers on them. So let's go down and see. These were planted one day after the others. So the, these are all pickling cucumbers. Um, you can see I've got one back there, one back there, two right here. I planted two to three per stick because I wasn't sure they'd all come up. So I've got about 50% germination right now. These that I planted one day earlier are doing even better. So this TP is little leaf cucumber and you can see I wrote little leaf and the five-year-old wrote cucumber. <laughs> um, we planted two or three at each stick. I need to edge it a little better and two have come up on every single stick. So here's hoping that they completely fill that in with pickling cucumbers. And then this is um, Johnny's Cool Cucumber. And these are doing even better. So these seeds are from Johnny's Seeds. I think somebody's coming over here trying to eat that up. And this guy needs to be watered, huh? He's looking a little peaked. We'll come back with some water. So you can see, I maybe overplanted these a little bit. I did. Oh, you know what? The girls were helping me. We did two on the inside and two on the outside. And we have almost 100% germination here. So I'm going to go back in and feed, um, thin them out. Even though it kind of kills me because they look so beautiful already. And they're just uh, one week old. One week old cucumbers. Yay! Okay, so now it's time to look at our salsa garden. Which is what we're calling this guy right here. Which was our only plan. This is the only thing we planned on planting. Um, but then... We just had that space and it gets full sun and you know you buy the seeds and you just kind of keep going so this is gonna have an arch right here hopefully very soon come to find out i cannot fit an 18 foot long cow paneling fencing in the back of my van so i'm either going to need to get two shorter ones and put them together or i'm going to need to get a like a roll of fencing but i'm not sure if that'll be strong enough to hold the sun gold tomatoes so imagine this is a arch covered in sun gold tomatoes. <laughs> the sun golds are planted right here. You see they're doing beautifully. Um, and then also over on this side, we've got one sun gold, two sun gold. There's also some nasturtium that I planted that are gonna, that's gonna grow up the archway. And then these two tomatoes were given to me by Build It Up and they are mountain fresh. And come to find out they are bush tomatoes they're determinate so they're going to get to a certain size and they're going to stop so they don't need the string trellis that i was planning on doing for the indeterminates 
So I'm probably gonna move them. And I'm probably gonna put a third sun gold in there. And then I'm gonna prune these pretty, pretty um, pruned to keep uh, the airflow moving as they grow. So that's sun gold, mountain fresh. I'll put up a picture here. So this is another volunteer. If you have any idea what this is, please tell me. I've Googled it 500 times and the internet tells me 50 different things. So this volunteer just leaving here, pretty sure this is a marigold I planted. Um, maybe another flower I planted. And then we have here bastion peppers. So these are poblano peppers. This is one. We've got, oh, these are basil right here. And so this is one of my bastion peppers. This is another bastion pepper. It's looking looking okay. And I think I have a third one in here somewhere, but I need to I need to plant one. So this bed is Cherokee purples, which are looking pretty good. Cherokee purples um, and then ha jalapenos. So I put my spicy peppers back here. So this is a jalapeno. Um, this I'm pretty sure is a zinnia that came up with a jalapeno. Um, this might be some alyssum I planted back here and more another jalapeno not looking great need to come back and water them and i'm pretty sure that's a cinnamon basil and another basil and um then another volunteer zucchini thing i keep calling them zucchini but they could be um they could be cucumbers or watermelons i'm gonna see since that one's in the corner i might just let him grow over now i'm gonna plant another another pepper here i think the peppers need to be fed they're either being overwatered or underfed. So I need to do a little research. If you have any suggestions for how to make my jalapeno happier, please tell me. And then next to this bed, so first of all, this bed, those Cherokee purples are gonna be held up with a Florida weave trellis, which is what these T posts are here for. So this will be a wall of tomato goodness right there. And then the arch there, and then another wall. I was planning on doing a wall there, but now I know those are determinate. So I might replace those with more sun gold. So my third kind of tomato, fourth kind of tomato. My <laughs> so this is supposed to be an entirely tomato and basil bed and it is not doing well at all. So this is an Amish paste tomato. And the goal was to put as many in here as we can to make salsa because um, Amish pastes are good at, you know, they're a paste tomato, so they're good and thick for salsa or sauce. And the tomatoes are just, I don't know if somebody's coming around and eating them. I don't know if they're too dry. I'm not sure. It has rained two to three inches every week and everything else in the garden is doing good without extra watering. But you can see this is, he's doing best. I've got a little nasturtium here. And then we've got one here, which I just recently planted. Here, let me shade it. One here, which I recently planted because this is the one that was originally there and he's doing very badly. And then there's another guy over there. Now, I don't know if Amish pastes just are much slower growing tomatoes, but I'm going to come out here and feed them and see if we can't puff them up a little. And then this is another volunteer something. These are three basils. So the way this is set up is that, because I ran out of tea posts, I have one tea post on this side and two on this side with the idea that we would do the Florida weave from here to here for these two Amish pastes, and then from here to here for these two Amish pastes. So I need another Amish paste here, and I actually started way too many tomatoes, so I'm gonna be able to do that. So that's this bed. So then to go back to the arch beds, we've got three um, sun gold here, and then we've got, um, this is my snacking peppers. <laughs> so this is a bell pepper, this is a half dead bell pepper and then these two are two peppers called glow um snacking sweet baby bell peppers and i'm so excited to try they are looking the absolute best of all the peppers and they were actually started later than all of them so i kind of wonder if i just started my peppers too early or what if you have any suggestions please let me know in this bed i also have marigold i have nasturtium and of course I have a volunteer zucchini because there's a volunteer in every single bed. So that's this corner. This is the four by four salsa bed, which by salsa bed, we really just mean tomatoes and peppers. Um, I'd love to put some cilantro in here when the tomatoes get a little bigger so they can shade the cilantro. And I'm probably gonna move those out, gonna plant another, um, but that's what it looks like today at the beginning of June. We got cucumbers coming up. 
We got our greens greening. We got our sunflowers popping up. I am so ready to see some blooms on my zinnias, my sunflowers, my tomatoes. I'm ready for it. So thank you so much for joining me for my first ever garden tour beginning of June. I'm going to do another one depending on when things start flowering. If it starts flowering, we'll do one mid-June, but we'll definitely have one by the beginning of July. And hopefully um, you'll see me put this trellis up very, very soon. So thanks for being here. If you want to see me do any of the projects I talked about, like the teepees or the beds or anything, I have videos on almost all of those. Check those out in the My Garden playlist. Thanks again for watching. Have a fabulous day. Mm -hmm.